Okay, so corneal topography was, uh, to be very frank, I had not much idea in first year. Most of uh, first year of PG. So most of the PGs just mung up this part of corneal topography without really understanding. So I'll be concentrating on the principles and the types of corneal topography and I'll be touching upon the uh, interpretation a little bit. But uh, it's important to understand the principles well if you want to really understand topography. You might be able to pass the exam, but you may not understand it fully if you don't understand it. So uh, topography, uh, the word topography is uh, drawn from two uh, Greek words. Topos meaning locus or place and graphene means to carve or to draw. So it's basically the study of shape of surfaces and it is uh, used to study geographical surfaces also. But in the case of cornea, uh, corneal topography is used to study the shape of the cornea. The broad uses of topography are, are to confirm or rule out uh, keratoconus and other uh, corneal ectatic diseases, uh, uh, to assess the fitness for refractive surgeries, and uh, for follow up after corneal refractive surgeries. These are two major uses. It is also used to stage keratoconus, look for progression in a known case of keratoconus, or planning toric IOLs, intraocular lenses. And it is useful to locate the uh, location of the uh, cone can be identified using topography. It is useful in intracorneal ring segments and doing cor corneal collagen cross-linking and for de deciding the diameter of graft in uh, deep anterior lamellar keratoplast. And also if there are certain ancillary uses like you can uh, uh, find out the anterior chamber depth, which is used for ICL planning. And, and uh, it is, uh, ICL is a type of implantable polymer lens. And it is also, uh, the, this is useful in uh, uh, contact lens fitting, especially the curvature values are useful in contact lens fitting, especially the uh, uh, rigid gas permeable uh, contact lenses. And also you can assess the density of cataract using certain uh, uh, topographies. Now, broadly the techniques can be divided into reflection based and elevation based techniques. The reflection based techniques include keratometry, placido disc, photokeratoscopy and video keratography. So keratometry is the most basic form of uh, topography where you don't really get a map. You just get two values, which is the steep uh, part of the cornea and the, which, is the uh, 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 which is the flat meridian of the cornea. So it basically uses this principle where uh, the uh, radius of curvature is calculated as the, uh, uh, the uh, multiplication between the image size and object size. And the final formula is R is equal to UI by O. That's U is the uh, object size or the image size. O is the object size and I is the image size. And uh, the power is calculated using the formula N2 minus N1 by R, where N2 is the uh, refractive index of the cornea, 1.376, and R is the radius of curvature that is calculated. The radius of curvature is what the keratometry calculates, and the uh, power of the cornea in biopters is given as a function of the radius, assuming the cornea to be of uniform refractive index, that is 1.37. So there are different types of keratometers available. This is the most one of the most commonly used, uh, the manual keratometer known as the Bosch and Dome keratometer. Uh, you also have the Jewel Shiots keratometer, which is also a type of manual keratometer. And then you have the auto, uh, auto keratometers, automatic keratometers. Uh, the advantages of keratometry are that it's simple and inexpensive and gives you an idea about the central 3mm of the cornea, which is where most of the refraction takes place. The disadvantage is, is that it assumes the cornea to be perfect sphere and there is no information that is provided regarding the posterior surface of the cornea. There's no information regarding the periphery and it is inaccurate in extremes of keratometry. It's very steep corneas and very flat corneas and also in irregular astigmatism does not give a uh, reliable values. Then comes the Placido's disc, which is a, uh, nothing but a, a series of uh, um, alternating black and white rings, which are equally spaced, uh, spaced from each other with a central hole. So you basically look through the central hole and you observe the reflection on the cornea. So the, in areas where the rings are spaced close together, uh, they, they represent the steep cornea and rings spaced further away represent the flat, flatter regions of the cornea. So in this uh, uh, image, you can see the rings are almost spaced equally from each other. So it's more, almost a spherical cornea. Here you can see that rings are spaced away from each other in the vertical meridian. And the rings are spaced closer to each other in the horizontal meridians. So this is the steeper cornea and this is the 
fatter region of the cord. So this is an against the rule astigmatism. And this is an example for irregular astigmatism where the Maya saturated uh, started. And again, they have placed farther away in this meridian and closer together somewhat to this meridian. But you cannot really divide this into two uh, meridians. This is an irregular astigmatism. So the advantage of uh, placebo disc is that it uh, gives a qualitative measure of the corneal surface. The disadvantage is that you don't get any quantification, you don't get any actual values. There's no information that is provided of the, of the posterior surface. It basically reflects from the tear film. It's affected by the tear film abnormalities. Also by nose and orbit anatomy. That if you have a prominent nose or a deep orbit, the reflections may not be clear. You may have uh, doses or lashes uh, which are interfering with the reflections. We may also have the orbital anatomy that's casting shadows on the reflections and does not give information about the very central cornea because you, that is where your aperture uh, lies for you. Uh, Photocatoscopy is nothing but placido disc images which are photographed. Uh, this was a, these are older instruments which are usually not used nowadays. What are used nowadays are the video keratographers. They are the modern day placido disc based reflection topographers. So they, you, the advantage is that they use more number of rings and you get you also get computer and assisted analysis. You get actual uh, values that you can compare. So it, it's more of a quantitative measurement, not just qualitative. You get more number of data points than a placebo. Advantages are that it is less costly than the elevation-based uh, topographers and gives more accurate information regarding the curvature than the elevation-based topographers. Because reflection-based topographers uh, find the slope of the cornea gives more accurate information regarding the curvature. Uh, whereas elevation-based topographers, uh, what they calculate is the elevation and curvature is indirectly derived. I will come to that later regarding difference between curvature and elevation. The disadvantage is that only uh, anterior surface is measured. It is affected a lot by the tear film abnormalities and affected by nose and orbit anatomy as uh, mentioned earlier. And you get limited information of the extreme peripheral cornea and the central, central cornea. Now coming to the elevation-based topographers, uh, the uh, first generation of elevation-based topographers was the OBSCAN. It used a slit scanning uh, based uh, technology where multiple slits were projected onto the cornea and the topography was described. The OBSCAN 2 combines both slit scanning uh, along with uh, and uh, placebo uh, disk-based uh, methods to obtain the topography. So in OBSCAN, basically what it does is it protects different to about 20 slits from each side, from the right side and from the left side. And in the center, you have overlapping slits. So it they generates a lot of points. And because you have overlapping slits in the central area, you get more information regarding the central corning. And it basically, uh, you have to understand the difference between curvature and elevation to understand what is elevation based on. So curvature, if you want to find out the curvature at this point of, suppose this is the cornea or any surface and you want to find the curvature at this point, what you do is you draw a tangent to it and you find out the, the radius of curvature of the circle that is uh, forms the, uh, that has the tangent at this point. So this is the radius of curvature. So the more the radius of curvature, flatter is the surface. If you look at this uh, uh, surface and you want to find the curvature at this point, the same method is used for the tangent at that point, and you can see the radius of curvature is smaller. So the smaller the radius of curvature, the steeper the surface. So curvature is the, uh, defined in terms of steep and flat. So this is the steep uh, area. This is a flat surface, a steep surface and a flat surface. When you come to elevation, elevation is always uh, described in reference to another point. So like if you want to uh, describe the height of Mount Everest, you explain it in terms of height from sea level, mean sea level. So similarly, you need a reference surface to describe the elevation. Suppose you want to uh, describe the elevation at this point, what you have to first construct is something called a best fit reference surface. Mostly it is a sphere. It can also be a toric ellipsoid. Uh, a sphere which fits this surface in at most points is calculated by the computer using an automated method. So that the maximum number of points of the surface touch this sphere. And what the computer does is it calculates how much elevated it is above the surface or depressed it is below the surface. So you can see in this 
figure that this point is elevated above the surface. So that is shown as an elevated area. And if you want to find out the elevation at this area on this surface, the best fit surface will uh, sphere will be larger. And you can see that this area is depressed below the best fit surface. So this will be shown in cooler colors. This should be shown in warmer colors like red, is shown in cooler colors like blue. I will uh, explain that later when I come to the scales. Basically, the OPS can use a specular reflection to, de to determine the slope and the curvature of the anterior surface. That's using the same as the Placido disk based technology. And uh, it uh, also uses triangulation of the backscattered beam. And when a beam of light is uh, falls on a surface, it can get backscattered in different directions. So all these beams of light are triangulated to one point and thus it, it finds out the elevation of the surface. So the slit scan is used to find out the elevation. The Placido disk technology is used to find out the curvature in the OPSCAN, OPSCAN 2. The uh, OPSCAN gives the anterior and posterior curvature of the cornea. So you have information about the posterior surface. It also gives the anterior and posterior elevation and also gives the thickness of the cornea or corneal pachymetry. The advantages of OPSCAN are that it uh, gives both posterior and anterior uh, corneal surfaces. Uh, it measures both, the, you get information regarding posterior corneal surface. Now, this is important in certain diseases like keratoconus because it is known that in keratoconus, the earliest changes occur on the posterior corneal surface. But the placido disk based in, uh, 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 devices measure only the anterior corneal surface. The, both the corneal power and the elevation can be accurately measured using the OPSCAN. And the disadvantage is that it has lesser data points when complete, compared to certain other topographers, the elevation based topographers like the seam fluke uh, uh, based topographers. And it's less reliable in uh, post surgery eyes, especially post refractive surgery eyes compared to the seam fluke based uh, uh, topographers. Now, coming to the seam fluke imaging, this is one of the most uh, can be considered as the old standard in uh, corneal topography. Uh, right now, it's also known as corneal tomography rather than topography because it also looks at the uh, uh, section of the cornea. The whole volume of the cornea is analyzed. Now, there are uh, various devices which use sheen flu uh, cameras. Uh, the most popular ones are the Pentacam and the Oculizer, which use the same kind of technology. This is the Pentacam. Then there is the Sirius topographer, which uses both Placido disk based technology and, uh, to calculate the curvature and the sheen flow camera to uh, calculate the elevation. Then you have Galilee, which uses dual sheen flow cameras, two sheen flow cameras are used, and also it uses the uh, uh, Placido disk based technology. Then you have the TMS-5 and the Precisio, these are the other, uh, not as popular, but they are also used as, uh, uh, as sheen flow imaging devices. Now, the principle of sheen flow imaging, uh, you have to understand to understand what is uh, uh, a sheen flow camera. In a normal camera, what happens is that we assume that the plane of the, the object and the plane of the image are parallel and they are parallel to the plane of the lens. As you know, the camera has both a lens and a sensor or a, sensor or a, a, a film. Film in the earlier times, now we have a sensor. Now, normal cameras have the lens and the sensor in this, which are parallel to each other. Now, these, are, these normal cameras are good to measure objects which are in one plane. So they'll get a clear image of the object in the one plane. But in objects which are, you know, not tilted, which are, uh, which are not in a single plane, like like this beach, you can see. In the when a photograph is taken with a normal camera, you can either focus over here or you can focus over here. You cannot get clear images of both using a normal camera. So if you want a clear image of the entire area, so what you need is a sheen flu camera. A sheen flu camera, what it does basically is the lens plane of the camera can be tilted. The camera has a lens which can be tilted so that the object plane, the plane of the object and the plane of the sensor and the lens plane all intersect at one point. This is the sheen fluke principle. It was described by Theodore sheen fluke, but it was initially described or initially used by Jules Carpentier. It's credited to a person called Jules Carpentier. Uh, sheen fluke is a, uh, is a German. So if you tilt the lens plane and the sensor plane such so that it meets the object plane at a point, you can get a clear image of the entire surface. Now, since cornea is a curved surface, 
to get a clear image of the entire cornea, you need to use the chin flu cameras. Chin flu or shine flag, you can pronounce it whatever way you want. What I found out is German correct pronunciation, chin flu. So this is an example of a, a pentacam scanning being done. So it has two cameras basically. The one camera is the chin flu camera that uh, rotates and there is a blue slit that is projected that is also uh, also rotates. So the one camera uh, uh, notes the uh, micro movements of the eye. The other camera is the chin flu camera that captures the image of the eye. This is the chin flu image that is obtained from a uh, pentacam. I'll mainly talk about the Pentacam and it's not, uh, not enough time to discuss all the devices. The most popular device is the Pentacam or the Oculizer. Uh, it, ca uh, it captures about 50 sheep look images less, in a short time, less than two seconds. You get a lot of elevation points, around 25,000. In the newer high resolution HR uh, Pentacam, you get one like 38,000 points. Uh, it measures both the anterior and posterior curvature and elevation and corneal pachymetry gives the anterior timber analysis and also gives a Densitometry of the cataract, that is how thick the cataract is. The advantages are that its accuracy is less dependent on tear film abnormalities. Posterior and the anterior corneal surfaces are measured and gives an accurate measurement of the elevation. There are more number of data points and there's high, higher repeatability of the measurements. Uh, the dis disadvantage include uh, that uh, the, it is affected by sudden eye movement and curvature is less accurate compared to the placebo based, -based, -based devices. And uh, because it, it derives curvature, it mainly measures elevation and derives curvature indirectly. So curvature may not be as, anterior curvature may not be as accurate compared to placebo -based, based devices. And obviously it is more expensive. This is one of the other uh, methods of elevation based topography. It's basically a theoretical method, uh, not used in clinically nowadays, where a calibrated grid is projected onto a fluorescein stained cornea. So the method is called raster stereography, and it's mostly an experimental and not used clinically. Another experimental method, which did not become popular clinically, was the using the interferometry. There are uh, interference of it used the principle of interference of fringes projected onto the cornea. And the Maastricht topographer was an example for that. Used moist. Uh, more uh, uh, interference fringes. Don't need to know too much about it. This is one of the uh, uh, latest innovations, which is a color LED based topographer, again, an elevation based topographer called a Cassini Total Corneal Astigmatism System. And it uses three colored lights red, yellow, and green. And it uses ray tracing, uh, which is a method to calculate, to triangulate the elevation. So it uh, uh, calculates the relevant local elevation using the Ray tracing system. Uh, I will not explain in detail about those uh, topographers, mainly concentrating on Pentagon. So a bit of bit about the interpretation. The in interpretation of topography, the first thing that you have to see is raw image, especially in placebo based based, -based uh, topographers. In sheen fluke image based devices, you have something called a quality specification. The quality space specification must not be in yellow, it means it is doubtful, or red. Red means you can discard the uh, quality of the image acquisition. Okay, the QS or quality specification must be in, uh, not in yellow or red. And uh, in uh, placebo space devices, you get the raw image. So this is a good example of a good raw image where you can see you can see almost all the uh, myers are uh, okay and they're not hidden or uh, by any uh, lashes or uh, lid or X or or the uh, um, nose shadow or anything like. That. But this is a raw image where you can see the myas are all distorted. This is a patient with dry eye. So as I said, placebo displaced topographers are affected by tear film abnormality. So patient with dry eye with lot of distorted image of myas. So this is not a good uh, uh, image to interpret. Here you can see that the lid is slightly tortic. Some of the lashes are covering superior area. Now you cannot trust the data that is coming from here because this data is extrapolated by the computer and they're not actual data of the corneal surface in this area. Again, you can see lashes covering this area. So this area, data in this area should be interpreted uh, cautiously. Again, here you can see there's a nose shadow that is uh, uh, obscuring this area where the data in this area should not be taken into account. Coming to the scales. Now, all the topographers display uh, different maps in different scales in different colors. So basically, if you're looking at the curvature maps, 
the curvature is displayed displayed in a scale which can be both absolute scale or a relative scale the absolute scale means in all corneas uh, the uh, in this example if you see in all corneas 60 diopters will be red 42 diopters will be green and in 30 diopters will be purple or 36 diopters will be blue so any uh, uh, this can be used for comparison between two images like uh, if you look at the uh, progression of keratoconus, if you want to look at a scale map of the curvature, you have to use absolute scale only. Now, relative scale, what it does is it, ex it uh, contracts all the uh, uh, range into one single range, uh, into uh, a particular color code. Now, this color code is uh, applicable only for this, this corner. So, if the corner range is from, uh, say, 44 to 48 diopters, then the blue, uh, the green would be around 46 diopters. If it is from uh, total corneal range is from 40 to 44 diopters, the uh, green would be around 42 diopters. So, 42 di uh, the green in one map is not comparable to the green in another map. So, the relative scale magnifies small irregularities. So, if you want to see exactly how bad the cornea is, how much the astigmatism is, you can use the relative scale, but it cannot be used for comparing between two maps. Now, the same scale can be used for elevation also. In uh, elevation, the red indicates uh, areas which are elevated above the surface and blue indicates areas which are elevated, I mean, depressed below the surface, below the best fit surface. And green indicates areas which are in level with the uh, best fit surface. And uh, you can also get to use this in pachymetry where red indicates thinner areas and blue indicates thicker areas. And green is uh, the average uh, pachymetry. So, this is an example <coughs> of a patient with the uh, difference using different scales. You can see this is the absolute scale as a relative scale. Uh, sorry, this is the relative scale and this is the absolute scale. So you can see that uh, the maps are uh, uh, the uh, a steep area is more highlighted in the relative scale. Now, curve, coming to the curvature maps, uh, the curvature maps are of two types, basically, the sagittal or axial curvature map and the instantaneous or tangential curvature map. Now, sagittal or axial curvature map looks at the uh, cornea in global perspective. That is, it does not highlight very small irregularity. Suppose you have a small irregularity here, it does not highlight it. Uh, because it compares the uh, a small change in radius of curvature this, in this area to the uh, radius of curvature of the almost uh, of the general average radius of curvature of the entire cord. So you can see that the uh, the uh, uh, the high area is not very much highlighted. The small area of irregularity is not very much highlighted. However, tangential radius of curvature what what it does is it zooms into that particular area. And the instantaneous radius of curvature at this very point is calculated. And that, when compared to this uh, radius of curvature of the entire surface, is vastly different. So it magnifies small irregularities. So tangential radius of curvature magnifies small irregularities. It is useful in uh, uh, showing the area of cone of a cornea. But the problem is that it can produce a lot of noise. So this is an example for an anti surgical map showing symmetrical bow ties. If the bow tie is vertical, it's with the rule astigmatism. If it is horizontal, it's against the rule. And if it's in between, it is oblique astigmatism. So the different patterns on the sagittal map that you can see, you can say get a round one, oval, superior steepening, inferior steepening, irregular pattern. Or you can get a symmetric bow tie. You can get a symmetric bow tie where the axis of astigmatism in uh, both the hemi meridians are screwed. That is, there's a difference of more than 20 degrees between these two axes. This is called SRAX or Doing a radial axis of astigmatism. You can get asymmetric bow tie without screwing with the inferior steepening, asymmetric bow tie with superior steepening, and asymmetric bow tie with screwing of radial axis of astigmatism. You can get a butterfly pattern, you can get a crab claw pattern, and also a junctional pattern. So these are the uh, representation of all those patterns uh, that I mentioned before uh, in actual topography. Now, in normal corneas, can uh, uh, demonstrate what is known as enantiomorphism. That is, the two eyes look like mirror images of each other. This is not an absolute necessity, but seen in normal corneas. Uh, now, I uh, talked about tangential map. Again, it uh, magnifies the small uh, abnormalities. Uh, it's useful in identifying the cone or area of ablation after refractory surgery. But the problem is that it can create noise. Norm not normally used, 
only uh, in certain uh, uh, specific indications we use such as for uh, identifying the code and for identifying uh, the uh, area of ablation so elevation maps as i uh, uh, said before it uses a you uh, constructs a computer constructs a best fit reference surface it can be a sphere or it can be a toric ellipsoid and the height of the uh, surface above or below the best fit surface is mentioned is is uh, shown in the maps is represented in the maps as you can see here this uh, vertical meridian is uh, steeper and uh, it is it is actually below the reference surface the vertical meridian shown in red it is the red the reference surface is this the blue dome and uh, the red color gives the vertical meridian which is below the reference surface and the horizontal meridian is the blue colored line which is above the reference surface so uh, the areas which are above or which are higher are represented in warmer colors like red and yellow and below are represented in blue the areas which are in line with the best fit touching the reference surface is shown by green again when we uh, refer to elevation we use measured we use terms like elevated above and below and we when we talk about curvature we talk about uh, steep and flat in elevation is seen uh, mostly in uh, elevation based topographers and not placido disk based topographers though certain placido disk based topographers give elevation by a method known as arc, arc step mapping which is a mathematical model they are not very accurate now the patterns of elevation maps can be a symmetric hourglass can be a skewed hourglass that is uh, shifted to one side it can be a tongue like extension or a central island or an irregular hourglass again Uh, the last one is a pachymetric map pachymetric map is given by a uh, uh, elevation based devices and usually you can see the thinness point of pachymetry the value of not just the uh, value of the thinness point of pachymetry you also have to see the location of the thinness point of pachymetry the thinness pachymetry if it is less than 500 microns in a patient with abnormal topography it is suspicious and if it's less than 4 cm microns uh, in in a patient with an abnormal topography it's extremely suspicious so uh, these are these values are different for different corneas i mean different uh, machines so what i am mentioning here is for uh, the pentagon and uh, uh, the pattern is usually concentric on uh, so, uh, centered on the rings are concentric centered on the thinnest point uh, you can see some abnormal shapes of uh, pachymetric maps where the uh, thinnest location is here it's displayed horizontally this is an ominous uh, this thing where the thinnest location is displaced vertically that is inferiorly this is a, a suggestive of a keratoconus and here the uh, we have dome shape patterns you see in pellucid marginal degeneration and we have generalized thinning which is seen in keratoconus so as i said before thin is red and thicker is blue and some thickness profiles are displayed in the uh, pentacam mainly this is basically what it does is it uh, centered on the thinnest location the topographer creates several circles and it ca uh, calculates the average of the uh, thickness in each of these circles and then compares it to the thinnest location and creates a graph uh, when it is uh, expressed in percentage it is called the percentage thickness increase and when it's not expressed in percentage it is called the corneal thickness spatial profile so basically in this map what you have to see is where the red line goes if it's between the tram lines it is okay if it is going away from the uh, between uh, here also it is between the tram lines it is okay if it is going away below or above then it is uh, uh, suspicious see so you can here you can see a quick slope where the red line is going below the tram lines here this is an uh, example of a form first keratoconus or a early keratoconus also s shape curves are also suggestive of keratoconus and other ectasias you can get a flat curve in very thick corneas such as corneas with fuchs dystrophy can get an inverted curve in pellucid marginal degeneration the curve is going upwards instead of uh, downwards and this is another uh, facility that is available in the pentacams called bell and ambrosio enhanced ectasia display 3 uh, where you can uh, get what is known as the uh, enhanced best fit sphere the normal best fit sphere what the computer how it calculates is it uh, calculates the sphere that touches the uh, surface at maximum number of points but an enhanced best fit sphere touches the sphere Uh, excluding the area of the code that is what it does is it, it, it excludes the data points that are sent, uh, centered on the thinness location and four mm around it that those data points are excluded by the computer to create the enhanced specific sphere so what the enhanced specific sphere does is it enhances the area of elevation 
that is a, this is without best fit sphere and with best fit sphere you can see that area of elevation is enhanced seen more clearly again the same thing here so in the bad display the first is the normal the normal best fit sphere the second display is with the enhanced best fit sphere and the third display is the difference between these two a minus b, uh, b minus a so if you get a red or a yellow in the last one especially in the posterior surface this is the anterior surface elevation this is the posterior elevation if you get a red or yellow it is highly suspicious and this guides you in that uh, in the uh, you should not attempt a refractive surgery in this uh, patient again you also get some, something called a final d value which is a combination of a different values about nine different values and uh, if it is between one uh, le uh, less than 1.6 it is okay between 1.6 and 2.6 shown in yellow and above 2.6 is shown in red red means it's an absolute contraindication yellow uh, it depends on the uh, uh, other in this other uh, factors it, you can decide whether to go ahead with refractive surgery or not using the bad display then some of the common indices that are mentioned i'll just uh, make a passing reference one is the simulator catometry used in uh, both placebo based space devices and uh, uh, elevation devices it shows it's similar to the catometry shows the uh, corneal power at the 3 mm zone then something called surface asymmetry index it is the uh, uh, again in, in the normal radially symmetrical surface has zero and higher the asymmetry higher the value something called surface irregularity index if it is above 0.56 it is highly suggestive of a abnormality such as keratoconus it shows the corneal irregularity in the central 4.5 mm of the cornea these are seen in placebo displaced devices again this is an important criteria you have to know for uh, placebo displaced devices the rabinovich mcdonald criteria it says that if the average value of corneal power for the central uh, keratometry if it is more than 47.2 it is suspicious keratoconus and inferior superior difference that is the difference between five points of the inferior hemisphere and five points of the superior hemisphere of the corneal region at 3 mm from the corneal apex at different intervals of 30 degrees each now if this difference is more than 1.4 diopters again it's suspicious for keratoconus then something called skewing of radius axis of astigmatism which i mentioned before this is the difference in axis between the inferior hemi meridian and the superior hemi meridian the axis of uh, inferior and superior hemi meridian if it is more than 20 degrees again is suspicious this is an index uh, described by rabinovich and rashid on the, uh, the pisa there is a multiplication of uh, keratometry central keratometry inferior superior difference the uh, astigmatism and the skewing of radial axis of astigmatism divided by 300 into 100 gives the uh, kisa percentage and kisa percentage more than 100% is a, a suggestive of a abnormality such as keratoconus and there are various other indices such as ksi kci and kpi uh, all this uh, you don't need to know by heart but just know that these are there are indices different topographers give different indices again cim is another indices index that is shown by a particular uh, topographer obscan surface irregularity is something that's mentioned in the central region of the obscan uh, it values greater than 1.5 in the area of 3 mm or more than area of, uh, 2 in the area of 5 mm are indicators of high irregularity and this a corneas should not undergo uh, ideally uh, a refractive surgery and then there's something called yeah i'll i'll try and wind up fast uh, yeah, uh yeah, yeah. Q, okay. q value the q value is zero in a spherical cornea in a prolate cornea that is the normal cornea cornea is flatter in the periphery and uh, uh, steeper in the center it is negative and positive in oblate corneas oblate corneas are obtained after myopic refractive surgery normal is around minus 0.6 again that bad d value that i mentioned before it combines nine different indices and just go to few examples <clears throat> this is the normal topography in a placebo displaced topographer this you can see the vertical symmetric bow tie in the rule asking matrix this is a asymmetric bow tie with superior steepening this is an irregular asking matrix This is keratoconus. You can see the inferior uh, paracentral steepening here, and this is a trap claw appearance that is seen in pellucid marginal image. To the op scan, this is a normal uh, uh, display of op scan. Contains usually uh, this is a called a quad map, anterior, posterior elevation, pachymetry, and this is the curvature. So you have to always in elevation based topographers look at elevations first, and then go to the pachymetry, and then come to the curvature. Here is an against the rule astigmatism. The horizontal meridian is uh, depressed below the BF specific sphere. This is the steeper meridian, so horizontal meridian is steeper. This is the with the rule astigmatism. The vertical meridian is steeper in the curvature. 
this is a keratoconus. As you can see, the elevation is shown in red. That is abnormal. The anterior elevation, posterior elevation also is abnormal. And you have very steep cornea vertically and very thin cornea. You can see the values are very low, 3.07. Uh, this is a pellucid marginal degeneration where you can see the, there is an area which is elevated inferiorly, both anterior and posterior elevation. And the cornea is thin inferiorly. And uh, you can see the, uh, uh, the, uh, the curvature map. It's a crap cloth here. Some examples of the pentacam and I line. This is spherical, near spherical cornea. This is the wither rule astigmatism where elevation is pretty normal and the uh, uh, curvature map shows the uh, vertical bow tie. The acumetry is also normal. This is a keratoconus where you can see the elevation, front elevation is ele the uh, values are high. It's about uh, plus about 20. And here, uh, posterior elevation is even higher, 42. So, you, uh, and the, the pachymetry is very thin. The cornea is very thin. And you, when you can look at the curvature map, you can get inferior, you can see inferior steepening. So, it's a keratoconus. So it's important to look at both eyes. In this eye, if you look at only in one eye, you don't see much of a change in the elevation maps or in the curvature or pachymetry maps. But here you can see the posterior elevation is highly elevated here. So uh, you always look at both eyes. This is after a uh, post-myopic LASIK where you can see that the central area is flattened and uh, it's, it's, uh, the anterior elevation is depressed, but the posterior elevation is not affected. The cornea is thinner. So finally, uh, to sum up, always check the raw image or the quality specification. Do not neglect the numerical parameters. Look at the indices. Look at elevation and pachymetry maps in elevation-based topography before you look at the curvature. And it must not be a single point to decide your diagnosis. Always look at all the key points in the unit. Look at maps from both eyes. And this is the most important point. You have to always correlate with your clinical uh, say, uh, signs and symptoms and with your retinoscopy. So whenever you are shown a, uh, a, vacuum, a, 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 a map of a topography and asked to make a diagnosis, before making the diagnosis, always say, I would like to examine the patient. So that is how the examiners get you. So always say you would like to examine the patient before you make the diagnosis. This is the most important point. Thank you.